By February 24th, 2022, Russia had attacked Ukraine. And by May of 2022, Bakhmut was attacked. And this town was undefeatable because of the Ukrainian armed forces. It's been nine months. Two armies have fought with latest conventional weapons, and they're still fighting up till today. I'm going to talk about what has happened with the timeline since Bakhmut has been undefeated to date. They fought equally to bitter end. In the ninth month, Russia overpowered Ukrainian forces with more larger army and ammunition in the end. By March 23, 2023, Russian forces are taking Bakhmut slowly but steadily. In other words, they are not charging or attacking in a hurry. They're taking their time. So they're calculating by taking block of any city by city and they are invading the whole town. Because you have to remember, Bakhmut is heavily fortified. By March 28, Zelensky sees Bakhmut defeat eventually. By March 29, Bakhmut fighting now block by block. Russians are gaining steadily. Now, just as a word of note, I have to say that Russia has shown immense resources of hardware. Russia is not fighting some babe in the woods. Ukraine is a country of 40 million people. Therefore, they have a pretty huge army and has had a major defense industry. Ukraine is a fighting a defensive war where the defenders have a 3 to 1 advantage and the Ukrainian armed forces had all American intelligence resources, virtually unlimited supply of money and even foreign fighters. If anything goes Russia is the David against the Goliath of NATO. And now the turning point has come. NATO has not done very good. And they have, sent, they have not sent their own soldiers in direct combat roles because of political backlash over dead bodies. So NATO is going to recruit poor people from poor countries instead. Despite the odds, Russia can still launch missiles in significant numbers. And remember, Russia is fighting all of NATO. We're not talking about one country versus one or two countries. We're talking about a block of 38 most powerful countries in the world fighting against one country. If Russia gets even quarter of the military support that Ukraine is getting, it looks like Putin was preparing for this war since 2014 when Russia invaded Crimea and preparing well. I have got to give it to him even though I think the war was a huge mistake but I'm proud to say Putin has done well. By April 23, Bakhmut is 90% under Russian forces. By April 25, Biden is worried that Ukraine inability to do counter-offensive to Russia in the east of the border and Crimea will at bare minimum effect. And Pentagon reports if all weapons were supplied to Ukraine initially by NATO, Ukraine would not be in this position today losing against Russia. See, this is the thing. The problem with NATO is they're trying to do two-phase analysis. Sometimes they help Ukraine, sometimes they don't help Ukraine. Then they say, okay, we'll send you these weapons, but we won't send you our best weapons. So they're in two minds. And when you are in two minds, you can't sustain a war with Russia because Russia is a superpower. They have their own factories, their own military companies who make their own weapons. By April 28, Wagner takes four outskirt blocks of Bakhmut, remaining four city blocks left out of the whole city. Next day, Ukraine troops on battlefield admit they do not have heavy firearms such as tanks, fighters, missiles to counterattack Russian constant advances. May 1st, Germany, Hungary, Lithuania now oppose Ukraine from joining NATO alliance. Now what does that mean? 
if these countries don't allow NATO to get inside and become a member of a NATO armed forces or the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, that means if Russia uses nuclear weapons or tactical nukes, Ukraine will be done. They cannot do a counter-offensive to Russia. Because if they do a counter-offensive, then Russia can attack Lithuania, Germany, Hungary, and so forth. And it will be like a world war in Europe. Russia will hammer Ukraine even more now. And this is where the fun begins. The Russians have started using phosphorus bombs. Now, what is a phosphorus bomb? Phosphorus bomb is a chemical substance which falls from the sky and it burns acid fire. So when you are in the ground, you get droplets of fire burning on your skin. When you get that, you, your whole body goes up in flame and you, be, you immediately die and you see your bones and skeleton until you drop dead. And you, your clothes won't help you. Even if you're wearing body armor, the phosphor gets through the metal. It's, it's intense heat, fire, rain. They did this in Volodar, and now they're doing it in Bahmut. May 3rd, Ukrainian targets Kremlin Putin's office in attempt to kill him, but failed. And this was the biggest mistake. They've sent a drone to attack Putin, and all of a sudden, the drone just went up and blown up on top of the roof of Kremlin. What did that do? This was a big mistake. Every single Russian soldier is pumping with adrenaline and anger, and they are willing to die just because they attacked Putin. What does that mean? The adrenaline is with Russia, and if these Ukrainians do anything to Russia, they will attack them with full force and they will lose in the end because all the Ukrainian soldiers are demoralized and the Russians are on fire. May 6th, Kyiv Ukraine government announced immediate surrender of Bahmut after 10 months bloody battle by both sides in history fact today, this battle of Bahmut was the most violent, horrific, and deadly in history of mankind. There has been no other battle this violent and super high technology enabled with both sides using drones, hypersonic missiles, using shoulder-fired RPGs to destroy tanks and individual soldiers, targeting from toy-like drones to kill each human using night vision. Officially, this defeat of Ukraine will turn the tide of war in Russia's favor. And you will see, Russian army will take several cities, if not just half of Ukraine, after this moment. Russia Wagner chief Prozenit has decided to call it quits from Bahmut. But I feel this is just propaganda. They're using the Wagner forces to attack elsewhere with airborne assault. Itself for disagreement with Moscow not to send supplies to Wagner forces. At the same time, Russian army forces are superior numbers in all around Ukraine. And then there is a rumor of reserve army units with additional 1,500 new tanks to be supplied soon in the front lines. Whereas Ukraine forces are facing short supply of ammunition and NATO has decided not to include Ukraine into NATO, which is a major blow for call to non-action, even if a mini tactical nuclear weapon strikes inside Ukraine. NATO will not take revenge attacks in this scenario, which is a good thing for all of Europe. Yazavut, Russia. Click like if you enjoyed the video. Click to see more of the videos and hope to see you next week. Bye-bye.